Hello, Buckeye Nation. What a game, fam. What a game. In the afterglow of Saturday's victory, a revelation dawned on me. The knot that I had been feeling in the pit of my stomach whenever the impending clash with Notre Dame crossed my mind had vanished. My mind was no longer racing with questions about whether our offense would hit its stride. And I didn't find myself nervously chewing on my lip, wondering about the authenticity of our defense. And then it dawned on me that just like that, my nerves for the game this upcoming weekend were gone. Let's dig into this more after the intro. Welcome to Buckeye Football Fangirl. If this is your first time here, my name is Lisa and I'm the gal behind this channel. I love the Ohio State Buckeyes and I tend to get a little overexcited about their games each week. If you're watching this, I'm going to assume that you might love the Buckeyes just as much as I do. So thank you so much for tuning in. We're heading into the toughest game on our schedule thus far, and it's already been a blast chatting with all of you in the comments section and on Twitter and celebrating these past three victories with you. I'm one happy fangirl, and if you watched my video last week, you'll remember that I laid out a wish list of items that I wanted to see in the game against Western Kentucky, and you know what? I got each and every item on that list. That game was glorious, and it was everything that we wanted and needed to see before this matchup against Notre Dame. I shared in the intro that my nerves around this trip to South Bend were just gone by the time the Western Kentucky game wrapped up. This is weird. As I'm normally a very nervous fan, I get super jittery before big games. And this game coming up against Notre Dame is not going to be a cakewalk. But as I ponder this oddly new sensation of not being nervous before a big game, I realized I can boil my lack of nerves down to a few things. So here's why I'm no longer feeling nervous about this showdown versus Notre Dame this weekend. Reason number one, 562 yards and seven touchdowns. Yep, the offense has still got it. It took a few games to get this Death Star going, but now that Kyle McCord has been named QB1 for the rest of the season, things seem to be flowing. It was amazing to see Trevion Henderson, Marvin Harrison Jr., Emeka Igbuka, and Chip Traynham showing the world what was up with brilliant play and touchdown scores. Even Carnell Tate got some touchdown action in, which made all of our hearts so happy to see. Reason number two, our defense scored more than Western Kentucky did. Let me repeat that, our defense scored more than Western Kentucky's offense did. Their offense, that was the high octane air raid offense that led the nation in passing yards last year was limited to just over 200 passing yards and one touchdown when they averaged 350 yards per game last year. IRD scored two touchdowns versus Western Kentucky's one touchdown and a field goal and kept Austin Reed and his plethora of wide receivers in check pretty much all game long. I am so proud of how far our defense has come in the past two years. And I'm especially stoked to see the improvements in the secondary year over year. I'm convinced that our defense can hold their own. And not just that, they even put points up on the board. Reason number three, QB1 is ready to play. McCord looked cool, calm, and collected as he doled out the ball on Saturday. Even after his fumble early in the game, he didn't let that rattle him, but came right back out and orchestrated the offense beautifully until the game was in hand. He was slinging it around in that 55 yard throw to Harrison for an almost 80 total yard touchdown down was jaw dropping, literally. My mouth was hanging open when I saw that. He showed us that he has that dog in him in the hype video that dropped before the game. And we saw that come out as he balled out on Saturday. Reason number four, things are starting to gel and this team is looking like a freight train and it couldn't have happened at a better time. Between the new offensive line, the new quarterback 
and only being two years into a new defensive scheme, there were a lot of moving pieces that had to come together for the Buckeyes to play cohesively this year. Offensive lines take time to form chemistry, and the prolonged quarterback battle had me worried that whoever was named QB1 wouldn't have enough time to find his rhythm before this Notre Dame game, but things really feel like they fell into place this weekend. And now this team is looking like a freight train ready to smash whatever lucky opponent is in its path. Reason number five, Notre Dame will be our toughest opponent yet, but the team has had this game circled for months. Multiple players have talked about it, and we know that they are not going to be looking past this Notre Dame game. Even after an exhilarating win like what we saw on Saturday, the team is taking the Fighting Irish seriously, and they all seem to be focused on taking care of business this coming weekend. So while I just shared my reasons for why I'm not feeling nervous anymore for this Saturday's game, where are you at? Are you feeling nervous? Or are your nerves gone like mine are? Go ahead, drop me a comment and let me know on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the most nervous, where you're at. Let's switch gears and talk about what we're going to see from Notre Dame this Saturday. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish are led by head coach Marcus Freeman. As we all know, Marcus Freeman is no stranger to Ohio State football. It's a story you likely know well. He attended Ohio State and left an enduring legacy as a linebacker. After a short stint in the NFL, he served as a grad assistant for Ohio State in 2010 before moving on to coach at Kent State, Purdue, Cincy, and most recently, Notre Dame. Less than a year after arriving at Notre Dame, he was promoted to head coach, where he is now heading into his second season at the helm of the Fighting Irish. Let's look at who we'll see on the field. Sam Hartman, a transfer quarterback from Wake Forest, has been drawing notable buzz after leading Notre Dame to victories in all four of their games so far this season. He has over 14,000 career passing yards with 13,000 of them coming from his five years playing at Wake Forest and 1,000 of them at Notre Dame. He has a proven track record leading teams and is not easily shaken when things don't go the way you think they will in games, which Coach Freeman credits as one of his most valuable traits. In fact, he's kind of known on the team as someone who uses his setbacks and adversity to motivate him to push to be better. While he was at Wake Forest, he experienced some issues with blood clots forming from a previous surgery that he had to have, and it was unfortunately looking like he was going to have to give up playing football. However, his doctors gave him the option of having another surgery to remove one of his ribs, opening up more space within his body to prevent future clots, and he opted to do that. Now, this is where the story gets a bit, um, interesting. He asked his surgeon if he could keep the rib. Yep, he kept the rib that they took out of his body. And then he asked his mom to turn it into a necklace, a necklace that he wears around his neck, reminding him of the adversity that he had to push through to get to where he is today as quarterback at Notre Dame. That's just a bit uh different in my opinion. I respect the sentiment, but I don't know. I'm a mom and if my son asked me to do that when he grew up, I'd be like, you want me to do what? That'd probably be a hard pass from me. But hey, to each their own? Looking at the running back position, Audric Estime has taken the majority of the carries at running back and is known for being a tough, physical, forceful back. He's run for just over 500 yards this season and is averaging 8.3 yards per carry. He had an impressive 80 yard touchdown run during their game against NC State. At wide receiver, Chris Tyree, Jaden Thomas, Tobias Merriweather, and Jaden Greathouse have been hauling in passes from Hartman. Tyree actually played running back his first three years at Notre Dame, where they utilized him more as a running back slash receiver. However, he has transitioned 
fully into the wide receiver position this year, and he has already been making waves by catching multiple long balls from Hartman. Moving over to the defensive side of the ball, Notre Dame has started the year out solidly and is currently ranked fourth in total defense, right behind our Buckeyes, who are ranked third. Linebacker Jack Kaiser leads the team with tackles, with 26 for this season. Linebacker Marist Leofau, defensive lineman Howard Cross, safety Thomas Harper, and this name should be familiar. Defensive lineman Javante Jean Baptiste are all right behind him with tackle counts in the mid teens. JJB, also known as the Riddler, was a Buckeye before transferring to Notre Dame, and he seems to be finding success, which makes me happy for him. So, how does Ohio State stack up against Notre Dame? When it comes to defense, we're looking at a clash between the third ranked and fourth ranked defense in the country, making it pretty even on that match. Offensively, Notre Dame currently sits at 16th in total offense, while Ohio State holds the 24th spot. It appears that Notre Dame has a slight edge there. So why am I not feeling nervous when on paper the matchup looks pretty even, with things slightly leaning in Notre Dame's favor based off of play thus far? Maybe I'm crazy, but I think our team is on an upward trajectory, and it's all coming together just in time for the Notre Dame showdown. Don't get me wrong, I expect it to be a hard fought game and I am not anticipating a one-sided blowout by any stretch. I have every confidence that Notre Dame will give us their all on Saturday. However, I firmly believe Ohio State will handle their business and come out with a victory. Maybe I'll change my mind as we get closer to the game and I might get nervous again, but I'm cool with my nerves just staying away this week as there will be plenty of other games for them to rear their head. How are you guys feeling about everything? Are you feeling nervous about this game coming up or are you feeling confident like I am heading into this Notre Dame game? Go ahead, let me know by dropping a comment below. All right, that's all I've got for this week. I'll catch you all on the other side of the game. Oh.